One of the best features of Adobe Character Animator is the ability to live stream your animated creations. Last month, I made a snowman character named Bluster, and for four days, I answered questions live on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and Instagram. In this tutorial, I'm gonna walk through what I did so you can create your own animated live streams. We'll start off with some tips about making a dynamic and easily controllable live stream worthy character. Then we'll take a look at how to customize and fine-tune streaming software to broadcast your character to the world. Let's start off by digging into Bluster. He's a free downloadable puppet and background, so you can open him up into Character Animator and see how everything works behind the scenes. There are two components that I think make a successful live animated character rig. Number one, having simple controls, and number two, including a set of diverse expressions. I'll go to File, Import, select the Bluster and Snow Background puppet files, and bring them in, which makes them appear in my project panel as new puppets. With Snow Background selected, I'll click the Add to New Scene button below to open it up in record mode. You might need to adjust the scene properties. For fluid live streaming, I tend to stick with 1280 by 720 at 24 FPS. If the dimensions are too big and the frame rate is too high, you can run into choppier streams depending on your computer specs and bandwidth. So I tend to start optimized like this. Then I'll drag the Bluster Puppet into the scene and use the transform behavior to move and resize him as need be. When you make a scene, by default you end up in the record workspace, but I'm going to switch over to the stream workspace instead. This workspace hides most of the timeline, so all you're really seeing is the selectable tracks on the left, and it makes the controls panel more prominent. So when I want Bluster to be sad or raise his arms or show a heart animation when he really likes something, those are clear buttons that I can press to trigger his various animations. Making a controls panel is a pretty easy and fun process. When you first come here, you'll see a Generate Controls button. Click it, and any triggers you've created will show up here as buttons. Bluster has 23 triggers listed in its triggers panel, so that's what shows up here. If you switch to layout mode, you can edit and move things around to organize the controls to your liking. Personally, I delete any swap set default triggers to keep things simple. So for example, the lid swap set has four states, squint, lower, upper, and the default wide-eyed look. But since the wide eye is the default, it automatically shows up when the other triggers are turned off. So it's one less button I need to worry about. I can simply select and delete it to clean up my controls a little. If there's any artwork associated with the triggered layers, it will automatically show up. If there are multiple artwork layers in the trigger, you can right click the button and select from the different available layers to customize it. But replays don't automatically get icons, and sometimes you might want to make a custom icon. If I go over to Rig Mode, I can see that the Controls panel is not open by default, but I can go to Window, Controls to change that. Then in Layout Mode, I can drag any layer on top of any button to change its icon. So that's why Bluster has a group called Hidden Stuff inside his body group. I made a bunch of custom icons, hid them inside his body, and dragged them into the buttons to make a nice, clear custom set. Note that while in layout mode, you can also drag any properties parameter with dotted lines around it into your controls panel, giving you the ability to add things like position X sliders and rotation dials. When you're going live, the last thing you want to worry about is remembering which key to press or scanning through a cluttered panel to find a relevant trigger. Experiment with different setups and see what works best for you and your character. If I'm streaming for 30 minutes straight and all viewers see is a character with the same expression glued to his face, it will feel stale, and a lot of times it won't match the emotion of what's being talked about. For example, when I was live streaming as Bluster, people often asked what it felt like to melt. That seems like a pretty traumatic experience, not something he should say with a smile on his face. So one of the triggers I used the most here was his sad mouth set, which changes his happy set of mouths to a sad set. Same with the eyes. I have happy eyes for when he's really excited about something and impressed eyes for when he's bragging. Mixing it up between these while talking makes the character really start to come to life. And for every question someone asked, I try to insert at least one emotion-based trigger to help convey whatever I felt Bluster was feeling. For the arms, I incorporated several replays to give Bluster a variety of arm positions. I separated these into two categories, poses and actions. For poses, I simply made a short blended dragger replay that holds in one pose. 
So for example, if I wanted Bluster to raise his right arm, I'd arm drag her, position the arms as I wanted, record for a few seconds, blend the edges, and right click to create a trigger and replay. Then I'd set the replay to stop sustain, make sure the trigger was latched, and add a key to it. By making a bunch of these and putting them in a swap set, Bluster now can cycle between several different arm poses. While I was streaming, I would often tap these at random intervals to show emphasis for certain points and keep things feeling alive. Some replays were longer, with more complicated sequences, like a wave with head movement and eye triggers, or a rhythmic arm gesture. Since viewers enter and leave from live streams often, being able to wave hello or goodbye seems like a must-have trigger to me. I probably use that one more than any other. Finally, I added a few cycle layers animations outside the body with question marks and a heart icon. Little animations like these can help keep things fresh and engaging and punctuate certain moments with a fun cartoon element. If you haven't watched the triggers and replays tutorials on this channel, I highly recommend checking them out. They go into a lot more detail about how to do all this stuff and are some of the most powerful tools at your disposal in Character Animator. Okay, so now you've got an amazing puppet that's ready for the spotlight. How do you get them from Character Animator to places like YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook? Well, it requires four parts. Character Animator, a plugin to send your scene to other software, streaming software that can take that scene and broadcast it out to the world, and finally, your destination, like YouTube or Twitch. I'll start by downloading NewTek's Network Device Interface, or NDI, plugin. The link is on the screen and in the video description below. This will download a package of tools, but the two I really want are the NDI for Adobe CC plugin and the NDI Video Monitor, which is called Studio Monitor for PC. So I'll install both of those. Let's test things out and make sure I'm getting an NDI signal. In Character Animator's stream workspace, notice the little stream live icon in the bottom right of the scene panel. When this is illuminated blue, it means it's on, sending out a live stream ready signal. If I click it while pressing Command on Mac or Control on Windows, I'll go to my Live Output Preferences. Here, I want to make sure Enable Mercury Transmit is checked up top, and my video device is Nutex NDI Output. I also want to make sure the Background Disable option below is not checked. When I click OK, my scene should now be ready to broadcast. Now I'll open up that NDI Video or Studio Monitor application that I also installed and go to File, My Computer Name, Adobe Character Animator. On Windows, this is accessed by a menu icon in the upper left corner of the window. And my live scene should now show up in a monitor window without any extra UI or cursors or anything. So this confirms to me that everything is working as expected. If you're trying this and it's not working, try clicking the Learn More About Live Streaming link in the Character Animator Live Output Preferences for some helpful troubleshooting tips. Next, I'll move on to streaming software. There are a ton of these out there. OBS, Wirecast, vMix, XSplit, and a lot more. You can try different ones and see what works best for your setup, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to use OBS Studio. It's a popular free and open source product that works well with Character Animator, and you can download it at obsproject.com. There's just one hitch. Out of the box, OBS currently doesn't support NDI. You'll have to download and install an extra plugin for that. Once again, the link is here on the screen and in the video description below. And luckily, this is the last thing that we have to download. All right, once I'm in OBS, I'm going to click the plus under sources and find NDI source. I'll click OK and then click the source name dropdown. If Character Animator and NDI are set up correctly, I should see it listed as a source in the dropdown here. Click OK and your Character Animator scene should now show up in the window above. You can drag it to move around or resize it with the circles in the corners. The size of your scene is found under OBS, Preferences, in the video category. I've mine set to 1280 by 720, just like my original character animator scene. Ideally, the mixer is showing your microphone audio as well, but if it isn't, just click the gear icon, go to Properties, and select the correct input device. But when you're broadcasting, there can often be an audio delay. And for cartoon lip sync, it can look really bad when the mouths are running a few frames behind everything else. What I do is click the gear icon, go into advanced audio properties, and add some sync offset, essentially adding a manual delay to the audio to line everything up correctly. 
For my setup, I found 300 milliseconds seems to look pretty good. But you can test this by setting a value and pressing the Start Recording button. This will record and save a local video file so you can see exactly how everything is lining up. And you can change the format and destination of that file by going into the Output section of your OBS preferences. If everything looks and sounds good, you're ready to move on to the last step, streaming. In the OBS preferences, you'll find a stream section that has a wide variety of services. Each service works a little differently, but the main thing you care about is a stream key. This is a unique secret code that a service like Twitch, YouTube, or Facebook will provide to allow you to stream. On Twitch, you can find this in your dashboard under channel settings. On YouTube, it's at the bottom of your live dashboard. And on Facebook, it's in the Connect tab when you try to start a live video. Copying and pasting this into OBS is the last step. Click OK, take a deep breath, and click Start Streaming. Your desktop will probably be a mess with Character Animator, OBS, and the Destination website all open simultaneously, so it's incredibly helpful to have a multi-monitor setup to see everything clearly. Now that we've covered the basics of live streaming, here are a few tips and tricks that might help you on your path to animated superstardom. One huge benefit of NDI is that it understands alpha channels, or the transparent parts of your video content. So I could turn Bluster's background off in Character Animator and add my webcam as another source in OBS, and now Bluster will show up overlaying on top of the camera source. So you could create some kind of setup where you have a live person talking to a cartoon, similar to what you might have seen with cartoon Donald Trump on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. This is also how Twitch video game streamers like Scribbly overlay their characters above the game they're playing. You can composite different sources together to create interesting live scenes. If you had multiple computers running Character Animator, you could connect them through NDI to have two or more characters talking simultaneously, like the team at Critically Awkward does. Think about ways to make your scene continually serve up new visual content. You'll notice Bluster's background has a cycle layers group that runs through several messages every 350 frames. This makes for an interesting dynamic element that lets you run through different calls to action or promotions. In a previous live stream I did with Red Monster, I used a similar technique to change the camera every several hundred frames, cycling between close-up, medium, and wide shots to make things more visually diverse. For the Bluster live streams, I got a free Google Voice phone number and asked people to call and leave messages in the voicemail. This was a big hit. Not only did it help break up the monotony of answering chat room questions, but there were questions I could pre-screen and think of entertaining responses to ahead of time. I listen to some podcasts that do live call-in shows through services like Discord, so I think there's a lot of potential here for taking live audience interactions outside of the normal chat questions. You'll notice when I was running through OBS destinations earlier, I left out Instagram. And that's because currently Instagram only lets you go live from your phone's camera, not allowing connections to OBS or any other streaming software. I hope this will change in the future, but for the Bluster live stream, I had to put my phone in a tripod and point it at the computer screen as a makeshift solution. The lip sync was off and the screen wasn't sharp, but it was fun nevertheless. And finally, practice makes perfect. It can be really hard to control a character, talk coherently, read chat messages, and even more if you're layering your character on top of video games or other activities. Before going live, try rehearsing offline, talking to yourself and answering imaginary questions. The more you practice with your puppet, the more familiar and comfortable you'll get with its controls panel. So that's an overview of live streaming with Character Animator. If you're streaming, we would love to tune in, so please use hashtag Character Animator when sharing on social media so we can check it out. And if you're running into trouble setting up your stream, the best place to get help is the official Adobe Character Animator forums. Thanks for watching and have fun live streaming.